Hey everybody, this is Dead Winter Dead with another Battlefield 4 video for you. Well, us PC players got a nice surprise today. Um, DICE decided to release Naval Strike. And maybe I've just been behind the eight ball, maybe I just haven't been keeping up with shit, but I had no idea this was going to happen. I got home from work to grab some lunch and uh, jumped on Battlelog real quick and saw that it had been released. So, yay us, yay PC. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I want to get you some just quick footage. I apologize for the fact that it might be just terrible gameplay. Um, I'm completely lost in these maps, but I wanted to try to get some of this out so you guys could see some of the PC footage. And it's 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 nice. I, I had a lot of fun with it. So if you do not recognize this map, this is Wave Breaker. This is the map that at the center of it, it has an underground sub facility. It looks like a, uh, a repair retrofit facility. Uh, for military subs and this this center area is excellent 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 now again I apologize for uh, some of the gameplay <clears throat> it's gonna be a little bit rough and while I say that I also have to tell you that I do end up getting MVP and I do end up going on uh, you know fairly nice kill streak but I think that was you know less because of, of you know my super ninja skill and more because we were all just lost um, I've had the opportunity, just like everyone else, to see some of this map um, from some other YouTubers, as well as uh, the PS4 community when they can get over their rubber banding issues, and some of the Xbox One community. So, I've seen a few of these maps, but I have, you know, it's, it's far, far and away, you know, I have not memorized them whatsoever. So I don't know the burn perimeters, I don't really know the, the flank routes or the entrances and exits. So you're going to see me doing just some kind of weird stuff where you're going to be like, what the hell is going on? So if, if I'm still doing this weird stuff and walking around like an idiot, you know, in the next couple of weeks, please call me out on it. Say, Dad, you are screwing up. Your map knowledge is terrible. But today, just give me a break. This is literally, literally my first game. My very first game of Carrier Assault. <clears throat> now, one of the reasons I want to get my hands on this is not only because we have four new beautiful maps from what I can tell these maps are beautiful I tried to spawn into a Nansha strike map and I spawned in I loaded out my my soldier I, I spawned in and got to see the waves for like a millisecond and then I got the splash screen your team has lost as I watched uh, you know my team's carrier just go down in flames so that was my real first game was uh, you know a spawn and loss on Nansha Strike but this was my full first game and I didn't show you the very the first uh, the first several minutes because it was just me kind of tooling around taking a look at things here I am approaching the F flag which is one of the entrances to the underground sub base and um, <clears throat> all of the flag points seem a little bit different there's a couple that are on some islands uh, some, some some of the outlying islands and there are three, I believe, that are inside, or not not inside, but there are two that are on the outside of the subbase, and then the actual, you know, the internal level of the subbase itself. And they're all really, really well done. The map is really designed really well. It looks like it's going to play out pretty good for Conquest. I'm excited to see Conquest on it. I'm not sure how it will play on Domination. Domination will probably just be this center island. I'm sure Team Deathmatch and Squad Deathmatch will just be this center island. And I have no idea how Rush will play on this, but I'm excited to play Rush on it as well. And again, as soon as I get some of that footage to you guys, I will absolutely get it out. So um, <clears throat> the next couple of days, I'm just going to try to blast this stuff out to uh, you know, so you guys can take a look at it. If you don't have a chance to actually, you know, sit down and play it, I know this is uh, this is Monday, and you know, I had to go to work today. I had to go to the gym bright and early. Then I had to go to physical um, uh, physical training, just you know, for uh, my rehab and stuff like that and I got off to come have lunch and you know here we go so I'm gonna have some chances to play it but I know that many of you might be students or have you know a full-time job and you might not have a chance to come in, you know and to actually really get your fingers into it until this weekend you know Friday Saturday Sunday etc etc depending on how your work week goes but my first impressions this map is it's a great looking map it's a lot of fun <clears throat> my first impressions of carrier assault um, but before I go there, first let me say this, um, and some of you who, who know my videos, 
my very favorite Battlefield game is 2142. I thought that was a brilliant game. Everything about it was just awesome. I put thousands of hours into it. I mean, I mean, we're talking, you know, two, you know, 2,500, maybe even 3,000 hours in it. Just stupid amounts of time. Um, obviously, I was I was younger then, and you know, I wasn't I wasn't married or didn't have uh, you know, my son. But <clears throat> it was still a lot of great times. And one of my favorite modes was Titan mode. And obviously, Carrier, Carrier Assault is based off of Titan mode. The idea being that you start off in a conquest type game. You have uh, a multitude of flags, anywhere from five to seven flags. And you um, have to capture the flags. And at each flag point is a mobile piece of uh, artillery or, or a mobile rocket unit. And as you control that flag, every 30 seconds or a minute or so, that rocket unit associated with that flag will fire off a rocket toward the enemy carrier or enemy titan, depending on what game you're talking about. The premise is exactly the same. It's just one is futuristic and this one is, you know, fairly modern or, uh, you know, just a few years, a few years uh, in the future. But... <clears throat> The idea being you hold on to the flags, the flags have um, mobile arty, mobile rocket systems. The rocket systems breach the carrier's defenses. Once the carrier's defenses are down, the carrier is open to the enemy. The enemy then proceeds to assault the carrier. Now, my big disappointment, and you guys may have already heard this already from some other YouTubers, is that you're not actually assaulting like, you know, like, oh, you know, we're going to assault the bridge first and then, you know, flip a switch. And you know the engine room will be will give us access, and then we get down to a munition stockpile, or you know the, you know the actual nuclear reactor of, of of the carrier. You know if these are actually nuclear carriers, um, you know, or the engine room, you're actually going after MCOM. So the 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 carrier opens, and what would typically be you know your uh, you know your secondary um, hangar deck, you know, for aircraft and whatnot, when they're actually not on the flight deck. Your secondary deck uh, holds the first MCOM. Once you destroy that, you've got you know 30 seconds or a minute, and then you get the message. You know the engine room is open. Then the, these blast doors kind of raise, and then you go into the engine room, and the MCOM is just right there. And it's it's it breaks the immersion and it breaks the fun because Titan mode had these kind of shield doors that you couldn't shoot through, but you could kind of see through, and you had to destroy different consoles. And once once you destroyed a console. You know, spe specific shields would actually go down, which gave you access to different parts of the carry or the Titan, and then eventually you worked your way to what was called the Titan Core, which is basically its engine, this futuristic kind of you know sci-fi looking thing, and then you know you put you planted C4, fired rockets at it, just, you, know, you just destroyed it with your weapons. And the thing about it was, it took forever to destroy with weapons. You you had to get a bunch of buddies in there and just fire off all your ammo, or plant your C4, or fire your rockets at it. And it took, it was an effort to destroy it, and all the while you had to prepare defenses because when you took the core room, the enemy was trying to take it back from you. And the core kind of had a life bar, and as that life bar dwindled down, eventually the Titan would explode. And then there was this, it gave you like 30 seconds, you know, evacuate the Titan. And then there was this cool cutscene of all these futuristic soldiers kind of, you know, doing these halo jumps out of these Titans trying to survive the blast. This one, you just arm the MCOM, they blow up like regular MCOMs, like in Rush, and there is no cutscene, there is no escape, the, you know, escape the carrier before you die, which is d disappointing. Um, <clears throat> the carrier, <coughs> excuse me, the carrier assault side of things does seem a little bit rushed. It seems like, I mean, the MCOMs are just models, they're just models that they made, they, they're, and they're obviously taken right out of Rush. So they already had that model prepared. Some animator made that model in, in a 3D renderer, and they used it as an asset in the engine, and they planted that asset and made that asset interactable with certain parameters, you know, whatever, you know, a 30-minute view or a 30-second fuse, a minute-long fuse, whatever. And, and it just seems kind of rushed and lazy, where, you know, as, you know, they, you know, they could have taken an animator and said, hey, you know, go back into the 3D program and render up, you know, some, you know, some aircraft carrier parts. And, you know, we'll place those in different areas. And it would have been nice, instead of just having two MCOMs, to maybe have four objectives that you had to get to. Um, or, or, you know, say, capture the bridge. And then once you capture the bridge, 
you you know you you know so, well, someone on your team has to you know pull a switch which will activate the blast doors in the engine room and you have to make your way down to the down to the blast doors and and it might be interesting if the bridge was recapturable the enemy could recapture the bridge and reseal you know the doors um it just seems like a really lazy solution to something that they already had down pat i mean i don't know how many of you played 2142 but it was it was polished it was so polished and if you got two you know fairly even teams they were epic epic gameplay now granted you know there are a lot of you know of new players to the battlefield franchise and they have no idea what they're doing um you know oh you know the carrier's open what does that mean i don't know what that means and you know they have no idea that that they can either attack the enemy's carrier or defend their own carrier if you know depending on which one's open but this match was kind of cool because we were neck and neck you know boom 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 just neck and neck and it was it was a lot of fun and you know a lot, lot of high action and it was just you know it kind of reminded me of, of of titan mode but you know, like a you know the poor man's version, the poor man's version of Titan mode, and and I'm I'm sorry if I'm if I'm at a loss for words because you know I'm excited and I want to get back into the game, but I also want to get you guys this this footage and get this video out so you guys can see it. But overall, I'd have to say that Titan Mo or not Titan mode, Carrier Assault, it was fun, it was action packed, it was a little bit disappointing in in just kind of the lazy execution. And I can see this getting very frustrating. I can see, um, you know, I can see players who are new to the series just getting lost and not knowing what to do when the screen says your carrier is open. You know, this is what you should do, um, and just kind of letting the enemy just sort of rape your carrier or or the enemy team not knowing what to do, and you go on and just solo the carrier by yourself because no one realizes, hey, maybe I should get back to my carrier. And, and, and defend and the, the fun thing about this game is there are so many choices when both carriers are open you have options you can a defend your carrier you can on the opposite of the side of the spectrum B attack the enemy's carrier or you have a third option C which is continue the fight on the ground ignore the carriers and, and hope your teammates are taking care of one side or the other you ignore the carriers you get back on the ground and you try to capture and hold as many flags as possible because remember that when you capture those flags rockets are still being fired into the air and the carriers are still taking damage so you can just flat out destroy a carrier with the the flag based rocket uh, systems without even entering the carrier and 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 laying waste to their MCOMs so there's that option as, as well which which is interesting and there was a lot of times and I again I hate to be this guy beating the old the old nostalgia drum but a lot there was a lot of times in Titan mode where you know you would have you know you'd have two squads on the Titan and, and you know you t t type in chat like hey you know you guys got the Titan all right cool I'm gonna stay on the ground and I'm gonna keep capping flags just doing that merry-go-round game because what happens is when people play this game properly or or they panic and they run back to their carrier because it's been breached or or, or, or they, they taste blood in the water and they run to the enemy's carrier because it's been breached They're like alright it's time to finish this game a lot of times what happens is the battlefield in between the carriers basically becomes this empty wasteland and right here I apologize for this I, I was friggin lost I was like there's gotta be a door around here somewhere and I was just I don't know what I was doing so just you know call me an idiot in the chat if you want to but I was just lost um, but yeah the you know when both carriers are open the the middle ground kinda becomes just a ghost town and you can just have your way with you know with the flag so if you can keep you know most of the flags in in, in your team's hands that means you're putting more firepower into the air more firepower into the side of this carrier and you are helping your team to destroy the enemy ca carrier a little bit quicker if they just have it locked down like let's say the entire team just pulls back and locks it down and you're like crap you know there's no way we're getting in there man they got claymores they got c4 they got all the sight lines and, you know and all the attack lanes just locked down guys are bipoded up then it's like all right you know what pull back pull our troops back don't don't fight that war of attrition inside the guts of the carrier pull back cap all the flags and bomb those guys back to the stone age and that's what's cool about this is, is is it's not 
not everybody on the entire on the entire server is focused on one thing. It's like, hey, am I going to attack? Am I going to defend? Or am I going to stay and just continue this conquest game and try to hold as many flags as possible to get as much ordnance in the air as I can and take these bad guys down from outside while my buddies are inside the guts of the carrier taking them down from within. So that's that's one of the cool things about this game, and that's what really draws me to it. I'm like, oh, this is so bitching. This is you know this is really really neat. I, I like this idea, um, but I do think that it was kind of, it was kind, I mean it was kind of lazy. I mean look, they took all the time to to, you know somebody did all this art, somebody rendered all these um, you know all these engine parts and all you know all the gantries and the walkways, and it looks neat. It looks neat inside, but. Then, you know, the, the interactive piece of the game is just, oh, let's just plop an MCOM right there. So it's like, okay, you know, I'm supposed to believe that you get on an aircraft carrier, you know, it's this multi-billion dollar machine of war, and there are just two little buttons spread throughout the uh, aircraft carrier. If I press them both and to blow, blow them up both, the entire aircraft carrier, its defensive and offensive capabilities and systems are completely for naught. If I just press these two buttons, it kind of kills it for me. But whatever, it's a video game, so you know. Th and this is what we have. But anyway, guys, we're coming to the end of this. Uh, my first impressions for this map: excellent map, fun map. I think it's going to be great on most game modes. Um, and carrier assault. This was a fun round. I had a lot of fun playing it. And these are all just random puppies on one of the U uh, Rock servers, I believe. And it was fun. I had fun doing it. But then again, it might just be that, like, oh, you know, something different is always exciting. And this right now is something different. So, anyway, PC guys, Naval Strike is out. Go to Origin, download it. It takes a little while to download. But, uh, you know, get your, get your booties inside the servers. Play some rounds. Let me know what you guys think of the game. And I'm going to be bringing you much more Naval Strike content to come. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Pass it on to whoever you want. Trying to grow the channel. We're getting close to 200 subs, so thank you guys for all of that. My name is Dead Winter Dead. Thanks for watching.